All right. Well, this is a video that's going to be about the start of examining this keyboard. Uh, eventually, well, as you'll see, it's got some vintage Cherry MX Black switches in it. And it happens to be the dirtiest keyboard I have. And uh, so I'm going to try my ultrasonic cleaner for the first time on it and eventually retrograding, but I'm waiting on my new sous vide from uh, Anova, but they're back ordered on the container part of that. So anyways, uh, the main goal is to take the keycaps off and I'll give them an ultrasonic bath and a salad spin to clean them and all that. So it's the first time doing it. So if I mess up, you'll get to watch that too. Um, let's see, what else can I say? Here's, uh, I guess, I can't really show you yet the ultrasonic cleaner, but I'm going to try to use a simple green extreme aircraft and precision cleaner. I don't know why I didn't just get the normal simple green. I guess I thought this would be better for some reason. Um, and then I have distilled water, of course, the cheaper, cheapest piece of this. So. You need some kind of ratio of uh, the cleaner to the distilled water and the ultrasonic. And then uh, I need, um, yeah, salad spinning with distilled water to get rid of the soapy suds. And uh, we'll see how clean they look. So here's uh, sort of, I guess, the best we can do for a close up on how gross some of the keycaps are. Maybe we'll keep them in mind, like F9 and F10 and the plus sign and the. I don't know what else. Let's see. Maybe the Nums Lock and these guys are pretty gross. It's almost like they spilled a Coke and didn't clean it or whatever. So we'll find out as we go. Um, so for now, I guess it'll be boring. As, and maybe we'll fast forward this part. But as I just remove the keycaps from the board for... Oh, I was going to say, I also want to you know, figure out more about this board, like we'll take it apart, and this is uh, Krauss for five, not that that's, I'll of course remember later, but it's a, uh, I don't see any dates on the back, and um, so I'm thinking, may, hoping maybe the PCB inside will have some. It is a Unitech serial number 751173, and then the model of Unitech is K156. I think I looked up uh, FCC on it, uh, I guess I got rid of that. Never mind. Um, I'll talk about that some other time. But it had two dates on it, two batches of under the same FCC ID, and they were like a few years apart. But I and I believe they were in both in the 80s. But <clears throat> hopefully, we'll get a date off the PCB uh, after I take all the keycaps off. I'll probably take the back, try to take the uh, case apart, and see if we can find something. So for now, just keycap removal. Um, you know, this will be my first set of, I guess, keeping the keycaps for, I want to get the, the MX switches, the blacks out and, uh, clean those up and lube them. But then this will be my first also key set. If I can retrobrite it and have it around for some use, that'd be awesome too. Don't really know when or where I'll use it yet, but just like the idea of reusing some parts here. This is a gross keyboard, and yes, I should buy gloves. I haven't quite got around to that yet. So again, as Wodan likes to say, I might get uh, hepatitis C from doing this, but wish me luck, because I don't want, I'm not gonna wait for uh, gloves, and I'm hoping I won't uh, get sick from touching this grodiness. And then we're gonna make it clean, clean enough that you'd wanna use it in the future, at least some of the parts. This is interesting up here because uh, I was wondering, you know, if there used to be a, a, some kind of tag here or not. It's weird that it's colored red. I don't know why it would be, but apparently a logo would have or should have been there. I bet, you know what I bet? Someone was like on the phone and wanting to doodle. So I bet they took their red pen, ink pen, and were on a phone call and they just sat there going like this, probably. 
the old uh, boredom trick, some kind of something to keep them busy while they're talking on the phone. That's my guess. All right, man, that's dirty. OMG. Any dead Cheetos, anyone? OMG is right. Oh my gosh. Dead Cheeto graveyard. I wish I could back up and show more of the pile of what I've got going here. Let's see. Might be able to scoot this over, show you this little pile I'm making here. Not that that's too much more exciting, but I need to get a better setup for overhead, uh, some kind of suspended camera. To, this is my phone uh, strapped to a desk lamp with a bendable arm. And it's only got one height, and it's not great. Well, we'll figure out a better scenario in the future. Just making do with what I have at the moment. Caps are very light and super light and not double shot, so I have to get a mic shelf. I don't quite know all the differences of what it is, whether it's dice sub or um, dice sublimation or pad printed, or I'd have to. I want to know those things, so hopefully I'll learn eventually and be able to pass that along as we go. But. All I know is it's not double shot at the moment. And I would wager a guess that it's definitely a ABS plastic since it, the whole thing's pretty gross and yellowy. It does not look as clean as a PBT might, in my opinion. But Hopefully these keycaps are of a decent vintage where we show that where we can uh, declare them as vintage. Uh, hopefully opening the keyboard will uh, let us will give us an answer to that. Or maybe a post to desk authority to ask on how we can figure out the date of this keyboard. And the FCC ID is interesting. That I had one the other day, though, where I was looking at a Keytronic keyboard of mine, and the FCC ID showed a date of like 1987, but both the case and the PCB said 1984. So I thought it was confusing as heck why they the board came out and then the FCC ID was actually three years later or something, and something's wrong there that I don't understand, and maybe. I did ask that question on uh, the authority. We'll see if anyone knows why that could happen. Doesn't seem logical to me. Yeah, this is a good, uh, like, like I said, I only care about cleaning the, ultimately cleaning the MX blacks, but so in other words, this keycap set, I don't care. We're going to try the cleaning and then the de-yellowing eventually. And so it's a good keycap set to experiment with. By the way, my finger, this is gross. My fingers feel absolutely gross from where I'm grabbing the, these keycaps. Just starting to build up some filth on my fingers. I've got to wash my hands after this stage just to feel clean. I feel dirty. And I don't like it. Oh, 
And then obviously when you get to the stabilizers, that's often tricky because some of them have some pretty funky ways of stabilizing the bigger cues. The Keytronic definitely did and I didn't understand it, but um, they, most of them came off without issue, without breaking. But I did have one where the stem on the, I think like the backspace or something or tab, uh, broke off inside the top of the switch. It was a foam and foil switch, but I don't know. So that, luckily I have three boards that are identical, so I guess I can replace it with one of the other two. But I don't need to replace it right now. I'm mostly using, <clears throat> these aren't, some of the keyboards I got aren't really great, like the foam and foil ones. I was gonna experiment cleaning them and repairing them just to get the experience, but I don't think that, you know, the keyboards themselves are not collector's items, I don't think, in most people's eyes but I'm just trying to get some experience on how to clean and how to take things apart and learn. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let me just slide these down so you can see them up there as I progress over here to this side. Although this board does have a nice, you know, the cable's actually pretty decent. I don't know much about whether you can even reuse those on other boards or whether you splice it over here. Or, I don't know. I haven't really read about that. Sometimes I see uh, Woden cutting the cables off, and other times he comments on that the cable's nice. And, I'm not sure if they're reusable on other boards or they only are good if they stay with the board they came on or well, that's most likely I guess. So. Come on. Get yourself out of there, you dirty key. Man, I feel like I need to rinse or buy a new uh, switch pull or a cap puller too because it's Probably getting just as gross as my fingers are, but it sure feels gross. Gotta fix that problem. Figure this will do this enough times it'll drive me to buy the gloves sooner rather than later. Okay, getting close here. What do we got? Two more to go. Uh, yeah, let's see. See, this is uh, I kind of like the fonts on these thing, this thing, but I know it's cheap ABS. Uh, you know, it's not double shot, but oh yeah, look, the six has a. I don't know if that's dirt or so, sorry. I'm trying to get it dialed in here. And there we go. Wonder if the ink came off of that six or there's dirt there. Maybe we'll find out more after we clean it. Oops. Okay, let's do this. Getting down to just the bigger pieces left. example I've seen. Look at that. Oh, that's great. 
coke probably spilled right there, huh? Ugh, filthy. And it's on my kitchen table. Sounds interesting. Let's see. Uh, here's this is one I removed that obviously has some interesting stabilizer going on there. It's kind of fun because each time the stabilizers have been sort of some different different one than I've seen in the classic cherry cherry stabilizers from modern that I've been put on my modern keyboards. But um, yep, here's another one. Wow, those are kind of cool. I haven't seen that kind before. Look at the profile on this Enter. Wow, it's a steep slope there, isn't it? I guess I should know what kind of profile, keycap profile that is. Maybe that's another thing I need to learn. I don't recall seeing something that steep. I guess since it was vertical, that's why the steepness really stands out. It's crossing like row four and row three or something, or row five and row four. All right, two left. That one's pretty straightforward. It looks the same as the other ones. Let's see if this guy is gonna come off very easily. There we go. Oh, look at that, okay. So it's got a a long stem right here and then across these three it's the normal uh, stabilizer we've been seeing on the other places and now we have the space bar let's see what we got there maybe i can oh i wouldn't take much jack in so yeah it's very similar to the others um, that was easier than my keytronic one the stabilizers were quite weird on that one okay let's see um, wow, that's filthy. Now I'm kind of scared to turn it upside down to take the stuff off, but to take the screws off, but that's what I'm going to do. We're going to try to oh, unscrew this bad boy. We know, we know what the, this means. This means there's a screw under here says warranty will be violated if the label's broken. Well, why would I remove the label? Because there's a, a screw in there is why. So we got one screw in this corner. Yeah, this one I think I, well, I guess I was gonna say I was gonna ditch the case, but I probably need it to try some large cleaning and retrobrading with cases the bigger size and how I'm gonna do that I don't know so I took off two here two, sorry two screws here now I'm gonna do these two and then there's four more on here I think so we're gonna avoid the warranty oh no 30 years later They won't repair it anymore. I guess we're out of luck. We'll have to fix it ourselves. I'm trying to think what I'm going to do with that warranty to get that the label off there instead of just smashing it into the screw the into the screw. What what should I do? Maybe I got some tweezers. I can grab it. Let's see what happens. All right, seven out of our eight screws are are now done. Well, now they're done. Now let's see what I got here. Let's see if this can. Mm-hmm. 
Warranty will be violated. We just violated a warranty. We're such rebels. We violated a warranty. Feels good, man. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. Part of the reveal is here. It's uh, kind of cool. What? How is this in here? So, all right, let's look at this. I don't see any uh, dates on this uh, bottom plastic part of the case, although there is something there. Let's see if I can get it on camera. It's just a part number. Uh, DYK 155-02A. That's what I'm reading. Uh, not much there. I'm gonna set that aside. And uh, we'll take a look at this. So it looks like our, um, I guess that's called a top mount. So this uh, PCB, oh, actually there's a plate. PCB is attached to a plate, the plate's attached, metal plate's attached to the um, PCB. So I think I'll switch to my smaller screwdriver. <coughs> actually, no, it's probably still the big one for these. There we go. And I forgot to look at the, let's look at the board while we're here. It's got, uh, says Da Yang K156 Rev 3.2 Chinsu 871130. That could, that looks like a date, 87, 11, 30. It's possible that the board is uh, November 1987. That's what I think. That would make these vintage blacks. Uh, I've already actually looked under a microscope of, I have a Weiss terminal that I got um, from the place in Texas on eBay. And then this one I got for $2 at my local recycler. And uh, I looked at the word cherry on both and the Weiss one actually had the, the newer cherry font. I forget which one's bigger or smaller at the, this exact moment. But, um, and then this, this one had the, the vintage. So I'd say the Weiss one was old, considered old, and then this one's considered vintage. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. I think we got the date we were looking for. But let's see, you know, maybe there's another date stamped on the other side of the PCB or something. And clearly says the word date beside it or something. So let's just find out. But for that, we'd have to get rid of uh, we have to t take apart, take the uh, PCB off of the, the plate it's mounted to. So here's the top plastic. Um, man, that's gross. I should not be touching this at all, but man, it's disgusting. Okay. Um, let's see what we got here for screws. How are we going to take this off of here. Um, do we see any screws anywhere? I'm not seeing any yet. I'm looking for them, but they have to be here, but I just gotta find them. Okay, I think I see them now. No, because it wouldn't be these. These are these are on the center of a black Cherry MX uh, switch. So where are the screws? How far does the plate go? So the plate goes in here and then down in here, this wide. Not that wide, but like, I guess it's an inch longer on this end, maybe to here, I suppose. So how is this, how are the, uh, 
How is it soldered on there? Well, I kind of got the date that I was looking for, so I'm kind of happy to stop at this point, but I, I would keep going if I could find the screws that attach this PCB to, it's, it's firmly attached. I guess if you unsolder, is it really just the switches? Are the switches, are plate mount switches? Is that why they don't poke through? So, so maybe the, that's why they're, it wants, you just literally have to unsolder is what I'm thinking because I'm not seeing any screws like I'm used to on some other plate mounted PCBs. All right, well, I think we got our date. That's exciting. Uh, I'll switch over to ultrasonic cleaning of the keycaps here. And so back in a moment. Okay, we're gonna figure this out on camera together. Um, this is the new ultrasonic cleaner. Got it off Amazon. I think it's a six liter or 10 liter, I forget. Um, if we look inside it real quick, you can see that the lid, I guess that's probably for the splashes, if there are any, so I'll probably cover it. This basket came with it. I need to get some little plastic baskets for smaller things that won't, so that they won't fall through the, the hole. And possibly I'm supposed to get a plastic basket so that it doesn't scratch things. I don't know if these can get scratched or not, but they're not gonna fit through the, the, the hole and, the, and fall down or anything, so. For now, and since I don't care about these keycaps that much, they're filthy and I want to see if they get clean. But uh, we'll just use this metal basket. It also came with this, uh, uh, I guess, like kind of like you'd see for a tea strainer, but so I suppose jewelry or small items you'd put in there and then put inside the ultrasonic. Um, it came with this hose uh, and this, uh, I guess, this nozzle. And so somehow I think they... Um, would go in here and the hose would go in there but I think I can probably just take it over to the sink and open it up and drain it into the sink so um, I haven't I have not um, plugged it in yet so we'll do that and then I think we might have to let it warm up and while we're doing that we'll figure out maybe some temperatures and also read about the cleaning to see uh, the cleaner how much you know I think I got to dilute it with distilled water so we'll see if I can get this right not gonna need these parts uh, how about we I guess put the all the caps in the basket and remember we're just trying to clean the filth off of these Later, I'll probably try Ultra Bright with a sous vide that I haven't received yet. Okay, so this is our basket that we're going to ultrasonic clean in a bit. Right now, I'm going to plug in the power to this thing. So, I don't know, I think minute-wise I want to go five, five minutes. And temperature, this seems to go up and down one degree Celsius. It, you know, it says set C and actual C. Oh, okay. I'm wondering why. I thought that was like a decimal remainder, like 40.22, because it's going up or down. But <clears throat> that's just the set part. And then now that I plugged it in, I assume this 22 will go up to match what we said. Now, I read other people's posts about PBT can go up to boiling, 100 degrees Celsius, but uh, ABS would melt, you know, at a certain point, definitely at the boiling point. And so I think the recommendation was it could go up to maybe 70 C, but um, I think for the purposes of this, I don't really need it to go that far, but I don't know. It's going to say 40, but let's go up to 50 and see. So we're going to do 50 degrees Celsius for five minutes. 
Uh, okay, I didn't. So there's an on off here, so that turned on. Uh, oh no, I shouldn't do that yet. So we need to have liquid in it before we do anything. And when we have liquid, I think we'll bring it to temperature. And then we'll dip these in and we will turn the timer on for five minutes. And, uh, and then when we're done, we'll rinse it. So like I said, I got some distilled water. Um, was my head in the way as I was doing all that? Jeez. Okay. Well, let's do it again real quick in case I missed it. This is what I want for temperature. This is the actual temperature. It won't start doing that until I turn it on. Uh, this has a timer of five minutes. And it actually it turns on the, the uh, ultrasonic part for that long. So we'll put it back to five minutes. So, and then we're not going to supposed to turn anything on until you have liquid in it. There's also supposed to be a max fill line, but I don't see one in there, but I think if these are submerged, I'd be happy, and I don't have a weight to um, make sure they don't float, but I guess we're just trying to clean them, so that's not this problem. I think Ultrabite is the one that needs full immersion to do its job evenly. Um, okay, so now we're going to look at, basically I have Simple Green Extreme for Aircraft and Precision Cleaner. And it discusses, let me lower this and see if we can maybe even zoom in on some wording. I don't know. Let's see if I can get that lined up for the, basically here's kind of a parts per million uh, table. Get this oriented right. And it's kind of showing, you know, one to three for certain kinds of applications like heavily soiled aircraft parts and stuff, which I don't have. Uh, dilution for other stuff's 1 to 13, and other amounts 1 to 30, 1 to 50, 1 to 127. 127's window wash. Uh, 1 to 30 is about pressure washing for heavily soiled aircraft vehicle or structures. Or, uh, then the 1 to 13 is general hand wash down of cleaning of floors, walls, counters. I'm kind of thinking maybe 1 to 30 because, you know, we're just experimenting. So uh, so this, yeah, it talks about liters and whatnot. I kind of don't know what I'm doing, so I'm going to try to do some math to get 1 to 30 with, I guess, measuring cups from the kitchen or something. So, um, so we'll probably fill up. Let me zoom back out here. Let's see, yeah. Um, raise this again, and we're gonna. I'm gonna get a measuring cup, and I guess one to 30. So if I'm gonna put in like some cups of distilled water and count how many, and then we'll do one thirtieth of that with a smaller measuring cup, I guess. Here's some measuring cups. So we'll do distilled water. Uh, one cup. Two cups. Three cups. Three cups. Six cups, seven cups, eight cups, nine, something over nine cups, uh, ten cups, let me go, twelve cups, let's say. 11 cups, 12 cups, so I got 12 cups of uh, water in there, and I think that, of distilled water, it's about two and a half inches deep, I think it should be enough for our guys here, in fact, I don't see the harm in putting them in now to find out. They 
aren't floating. I guess ultrasonic will move them around. I guess they don't need to be submerged, I suppose. The water's definitely deep enough. The water's definitely deep enough to, um, if they were weighted, they'd, they'd all be underwater, but they're light enough that they're floating. Don't know what I'm doing, but we'll find out, I guess. So now I need, I got 12 cups and I need 1 30th of that as some kind of measuring cup thing. Will, you got some math for me? What's 1 30th of 12 cups? equals a lot uh, so what's one third or yeah it tells me in teaspoons so it's 192 teaspoons actually I don't want to use teaspoons let's see if I can about divide that by three 64 tablespoons I have a really wonderful app on my phone that can tell us all I about was it. close I was close what I said two something and what? teaspoons that's that's 2.13 so like two and a seven tablespoons it's really tablespoons that small? Okay. So you're saying if I did calculator 192 tablespoons. 192 divided by 3 is. 192 uh, divided by 30. That's 192 teaspoons. I get 6 teaspoons. Divided by. T 6 tablespoons if I divide 192 by 30. I need 130. Oh, you told me 100 teaspoons. Yeah. So that's. Yeah, 6 that. tablespoons. So that makes me think it's an eighth. I'd rather have it in cups. So what's. Yeah, like an eighth of a cup or something, or what am I missing here? Yeah, that's like a coffee scoop. Uh, I don't, I want it in... Did you pause, I hope? No, it's oh. just math. I should do the math. No, I mean you're recording? I guess six tablespoons or seven. I'm going to do that. I don't know. So where's the tablespoon measuring thing? Okay, here we go. I think uh, I had 192. Let's do this again. Um, oh. You can't put wooden uh, spatulas in the washer. U.S. tablespoons. I didn't do that. Uh, 12 cups is 192 tablespoons divided by 30 is 6.4 tablespoons. So we're going to pour. 6.4 tablespoons of, uh, let's see, of our magic liquid cleaner here. Uh, simple green extreme. Actually, I don't know if it's just soap, but I don't know if it's supposed to touch your hands or not. I don't know. All right, let's see if we can manage this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good thing we're not living still in the septic system. Uh, okay. Uh, that's our soap. I'm seeing some liquid bubbles in there. So to uh, liquid, and I'm going to start heating up the 
the uh, I think we can turn on the temperature so we can see if we can raise that to uh, I don't know, 50 degrees Celsius for the cleaning. Uh, so as you can see that I think you can see. Let's get my yeah. Uh, let's lower it for a sec so we can kind of watch the temperature dial. Maybe zoom in on that. So right now we're basically waiting to see if the temperature will get up to probably shouldn't dip them in there yet I guess but because it's not going yet and the temperature hasn't risen yet but I don't really know is it longer to have them just sitting in there I guess why would that be a problem it's not hot yet and so if it takes a little bit you know too long to get up to speed then it'll be like hot for a long period of time which I don't want but I would have thought the 22 would start moving up but maybe it happens rapidly when you turn it on we'll give it a minute and if it doesn't change if 22 doesn't change we're just going to turn it on and Yeah, it's not changing. So I think we're gonna put the lid on and uh, let it rip and see what, see if we can observe what's going on. See if I can see the temperature and the, oh yeah, there I can adjust the angle here in a second. Okay. So right now I'm gonna turn on the uh, ultrasonic and then maybe quickly put the lid on if it splashes. I don't quite know how it works. I heard it's noisy. Like in Woden's, he had to turn off. His audio was destroyed, so we'll see. Now you can see the temperature is rising. I've never used one of these things, so it's new to me too, but we're just guessing at what's happening. So it looks like the temperature rises just by the ultrasonic action. I wonder how, I mean, if it reaches 50, what would make it not keep getting hotter? I don't know. Maybe it cuts off when it reaches 50? Maybe heat's not really, I guess I would have assumed you'd do it at a certain temperature, uh, but maybe it's just the action of the ultrasonic action over a period of time is all you really care, and heat's just a natural byproduct, I'll have to read about that. <clears throat> the owner's manual that came with it was didn't say hardly anything just said make sure there's fluid in it before you turn it on kind of thing. I want to stick to poke it and move it around. As you can see, I don't know if you can, but the like the zero insert key and the I don't know. It's kind of not moving, so I wonder if it's going to get clean on top. I don't see how it could. And the five percent, same thing. I kind of feel like I should be swishing them around and moving them, but. So we're going to 
poke the bear on this one and see if uh, we need to stir. They do look cleaner already, honestly. Isn't that amazing? Okay, five seconds, what's gonna happen? Oh, okay, turn it off both. So we're gonna let it, uh, you know, cool off, I guess, while we think about some stuff here. It did look like it was cleaning. Uh, I mean, they, they visibly look cleaner for sure. I think it did its job, but we'll find out after we rinse things off. But I kind of wanted to read, kind of felt like my fingers were stinging a tiny bit from the simple green. Let's mm -hmm. see, if, see if we can uh, look up the ingredients of it and uh, see what it says here. I can't quite read it. If in eyes, do stuff with water. Uh, caution, eye irritation is all it says, but I don't know, what's the ingredients? I'm looking at French, turn it back to English. Wait, that's up there, okay. Water, uh, triethanolamine. See, it's all chemicals, like of course it hurts your fingers. I don't know, it's cleaner. And you can't pronounce it. The water's not hot. It stuck my finger in it. Uh, not your probably the most scientific way to experiment here. Anyways, uh, uh, now we're gonna uh, I think move to the sink and see what we can do for rinsing these parts. Move to the sink if you don't mind. Hoping it would be empty. Can you help me out, or do I, can you or at least let me get stuff on? Um, yeah, close the dishwasher here. Are you paused? Why don't you pause? Because I just want to want you to help me, and not you know just watch me. Or The lighting might be poor when we move, move over there, but... There's another light, dude. Um, so, one thing we can do is 
guess transfer the contents over to the salad spinner because we're going to be using that. So without even going to the sink yet, I think we should be able to do that. use it more than one time. I guess it just sits here for days or in the garage or something. I don't know yet. But I wasn't really prepared to do a bunch more sets of cleaning. But So here's our um, really ultrasonically cleaned caps. And we're going to do some rinsing over here with some distilled water. Distilled water is around, I don't know, 99 cents a gallon. The, um, the, uh, the simple green gallon or quart or whatever, what it, I think it's a gallon of uh, cleaner, that's more like 15 bucks and it's, it should last a long time. I used six tablespoons. You saw that. So we're gonna pour some distilled water. Fire up the crank on this thing and try to get some rinse going there with some uh, distilled water. Now if I just poured it out, it would obviously pour out, but I wanted to see, I think part of it's to see when you, when you no longer see suds, you know it's clean. It's going to take a few times, but so I pour out the... got. Add some more rinse and repeat, I guess. That's how to put it. Sides, but still noticeable amount. Too much. Actually, it's looking clear every time. So, in fact, I would even say it's you know clear enough. So I'm not going to add any more distilled water and just gonna try to dry off what we have in there so by spinning it dry. Part of why I like this hobby is that everything's tactile, you're just touching things and it's kind of fun to spin that thing. an example here's a an f4 key you know in the earlier in the video i filmed some really gross ones maybe i'll track down which ones those are and we can look at them but i think it did its job 
Now I need to dry them. I don't really know what I'm going to do there. But I have an idea. I'm going to borrow the basically the dishwasher drying rack and uh, or the hand drying rack here, the mat for it. And uh, I'm going to spread them out on here. And then I there's a heater that blows in the floor. I might be able to turn that on to do some, to do some magic for us. I'm not sure how to arrange these. I guess we'll just turn, let's try belly up first and then when they seem dry we'll flip them over and get the tops dry I guess. No one really describes in detail how they dry them other than maybe hand drying them but we're just going to try letting them naturally air dry hopefully accelerating it with the, the heater from the floor. And I hope I can move it. They, they do feel a little sticky though. But I don't know. Not sure what that is. Maybe I didn't get all the soap off and I need to do it more times. Let's see what happens when they dry. touching each other because they're kind of sticky. I don't know if they'll stick. I think it could just be the, the scum, you know, the water molecules wanting to grow onto the next cat's water, water molecules. hope so, and not like soap residue or something, but I can't quite tell. I don't think, they, I don't think they're sticky. That was fun. First time I've ever done it. Okay, it's like spreading tater tots in the oven so they can get baked evenly. Okay, let's now all that work. Let's see if I can transfer it without spilling it. Allie, do you know how to turn on this floor heater thing? Is it controllable by itself? Um, no. Turn it on for us a little bit. Why don't you get this big heater? Where's that at? Um, it's in our bedroom. Okay, change of plans. The recommendation is to turn the space heater on. I'm gonna go get that for a sec and see what it does. Okay, we're going to move over to the kitchen table here. And uh, I have the space here set up right there. And uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe like a medium temperature. I kind of 
kind of set it on medium fan and medium temperature. I'm just going to let it blow for a bit. And then you can feel the heat. Interesting. You can see, see the drops of water glistening, distilled water at least, glistening in the, in the, in the key caps. Pretty excited that to, to clean them. That's kind of fun. All right. Don't really need to time lapse this, but I was just gonna. So I'm gonna turn it off for now, and we'll be back later. So that's the next morning, and I think they're pretty dry. I'm gonna. I don't want them to get dirt from other kitchen stuff now, so I'm gonna put them in a bag. But um, this one, you can see, didn't quite get clean, but I'd say overall, I mean, they all, they all look pretty dang clean compared to what they looked like before. And then, um, yeah, I, mean, I wish I knew what, you know, how this lettering was done. What are my choices? Laser etched, pad printed, dye sublimation. Pretty crisp font. Oh, look at the yellowing on the top layer of this one. So can't wait to do. Uh, this really shows the the difference. Do some uh, retro biting. Where's my favorite key? There was a vertical key that the slope of it was. I think I already showed it in the other video, but <coughs> yeah. Here's the enter key, but look at the. I guess I didn't expect the slope to be that steep. Wow. Pretty, pretty shiny. Alright, anyways, they're clean and dry. I was going to take a look at. I think each key maybe is a different one. bag for safekeeping. Deep inside the stems, it's uh, probably some droplets, a droplet or two still. But I think we'll just look for on the outside where there's any drying left. It's kind of a nice font, actually. Well done, whatever it was. Feel raised or anything, but look around. Let's see if my fingernails are to feel it. So what does that leave? It might be dye sublimated or laser etched. <coughs> Maybe one's an older or newer technique, and I can read about it since this is an old keyboard. But it's pretty quality, whatever it is. No bleeding of the fonts. Keycaps are clean. So 
Intersonic Vivid Strong. Dirty, the one that did have some grime on it. I, th I think I'll clean that off if I can see it go by. Yeah, I think I'll visually inspect about the glasses. It is fascinating to see the yellowing. You can see the layers. Top half is yellowed and the bottom where it wasn't getting UV light was is not. It's definitely a distinct, fairly distinct difference in the color. Alright, let's look for dirty stuff. Clean, clean. Clean. Wonder if I'll even my QA checking, we'll see if I can find that one that definitely needed a little extra clean. these old things are 30 plus years old and the idea of giving them new life like this this is a clean keycap lamp just like plastic didn't degrade really over the 30 years so it's like having a new set of keycaps after ultra bright then I really can imagine that it's like owning a brand new you know owning it like it when it, like it was brand new Miss that dirty one in my while I was talking here. Good old Zed. feel to them. Sometimes I wonder, you know, you don't pay attention to the things you use, and, but holding each keycap in your hand, you're like, oh, that's the amount of detail that went into it, the curving. Look at the, the curves on the keycap top there. Interesting. Well, I still haven't seen my dirty one go by, but not dirty, but has a little remaining smudge on it. We got to get rid But one out of a hundred isn't bad, right? Might as well only look on the bottom because the tops definitely don't have any dirt on them. But the one had some on the underside. I have a feeling it was maybe out of the water is why. It's trying to stir the stir the the pot so they all have a fair amount of time under the immersed in the liquid but one of the keys escaped complete clean
just the home and row keys like F and J or whatever ones they are. But they have a little underscore, but this numpad has a dot in the far. That's where the word is, I guess. say I don't care about it that much. Overall I'm happy with what patch how the cleaning went. Okay, let's put the uh, I store things in Ziploc bags, uh, as I've seen, uh, I believe I've seen others do. This is a Dymo label printer. Uh, hopefully it'll have the name, yep, Unitech K156, because I couldn't remember it and I didn't want to go look it up, so uh, I think I'll put, yeah, I'll just print one of these. And, uh, This is how you cut, cut it, and then I we'll also want a, a uh, to say clean, I guess, because some of them, you know, when I remove them, they're in a bag and they're dirty. I, should, I need to put the word dirty actually somewhere in there, but clean print. Yeah, my daughter wanted to label her, and I kind of did for this pro these keyboard projects, so it's been pretty fun. I would recommend it. It's a nice printer. And the peel, like they have a, this, they have a, it's, uh, you just bend it and it's split down the middle. That's how you make it for easy peeling. But, um, I, this is like a three quarter inch. Uh, but they have different uh, widths, and I actually bought a, I think, 3 8 inch or something smaller, and I uh, haven't tried it yet, but I hope it has this thing where it's split down the middle so it's easy to peel. I assume they did something to make it easy. Uh, so yeah, this is a clean cap from the Unitech K156.